Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to be working on my unusual shaped Scots pine. I last pruned this tree up in May of this year. So it's grown all summer and it's got a lot of new branches that have grown in. It's kind of back butted, which is really nice. It's getting a lot of good branch structure. You can see my main leader here. I cut it off here, regrew a new top to the leader. So it's looking quite twisty. The uh, trunk is getting fairly mature on it. You can't really see a whole lot of it from the front view, but someday you will. It's got this crossing branch that crosses the trunk line. Another one that sweeps up here. So my goal was to try and kind of get this tree to match this pot that Shani made. It's kind of an unusual pot and I'm trying to get the tree to kind of look like it's flattened on a mountain, kind of conforms to the shape of the wind and the environment around it. So a very kind of windswept, uh, natural looking tree, not one that's contrived by a person. Uh, something that's very unusual and yeah, it looks natural like no one's ever touched it. It looks like it was shaped by nature, not by a person. That's my goal. I'm going to begin the pruning work now. This pine is being totally grown with clip and grow, and that's how I want to style it. I'm not going to wire it down or anything. It's all going to be clip and grow. So here I go. I'm going to start the pruning work on this lowest branch, the one that sweeps in front of the trunk line. Um, I don't want it raising up, so I've got a lot of vertical growth on here, but I have some nice cascading branches out front here. So I might want to replace some of these ones that are going vertical with a more of a cascade branch. On here, you can see I have this trunk line comes up and I've got two new shoots each side here. So I could definitely prune this long top off and I will. Uh, I'm going to leave a bit of a stub for dieback. So here, here's that spot, a close up of it. You can see it's dividing from one to two and then there's a back branch here also. So I'm going to start by clipping this one off. So leaving a bit of room for dieback. So here I go, like that, that comes off. And then I've got this one out the back. Now I do have a new bud here. Um, I've got a shoot coming out the back here. So I could, I'm going to see, um, I want this branch to come up and divide from one to two. So I can either, you know, keep this shoot here and this one, which is growing in towards the center of the tree. So I probably don't want this one. I probably want to grow this one on the bottom and the one out the back. So I've got a bud there. I've got a branch out the back, so I'm going to snip the tip off and again leave a bit of room for dieback, like that. And then I'm going to remove that bud growing on the inside here, like that. So I'm using this branch comes up, divides from one to two. And it's my kind of lowest, most flowing branches. So the rest of the branch is quite flat. Now, I still have the possibility of pruning that entire top off if I want to. I may do that. This branch is nice. The only problem is it's coming straight out at the viewer. So I've got to look at it from the front view here, which is, I don't know, somewhere about here. Maybe more, I don't know, about here, I guess. So it is kind of coming straight out towards the viewer. Um, This is a nice branch, this lowest one. Really nice. You know what, I, I'm not liking this one coming up. I like the one at the back, I like the one at the front, but I don't like this one that's coming up. I think I'm gonna take it right off. You now I tried pruning it up. I just don't like it. It this this branch follows the one at the back almost exactly. It's parallel. I would rather this one be a lower kind of flatter branch here and this just grows up too much. I'm going to take it off. So here I go. I'll, again, I'll leave a stub. So 
Big cut coming up. Just like that. So that comes off. So you can see this branch looks a lot flatter now. Now there's a part that sticks up here. I've got like two opposite branches here. I don't think I want that vertical one, so I'm taking that off. That one comes off there. So now you can see a lot of this branch. And then I don't want this extending out, sticking in, in your face. So I'm going to prune it back using these two shoots back here. So I'll prune it off right here, leaving room for die back again, like that. So now you can really see this branch, how it's flat. It's got a lot of development in this area. So once, once all these shoots mature, I can shorten this branch. I can prune it back, making it more compact. And I think that'll look really nice. But I've got to wait for these buds to mature. If I pruned it back to them now, they may survive, they may not. The whole branch could die back. So it's better to let new shoots like this gain a bit of strength before you go pruning back to them. So the rest of this growth in this branch, uh, there's some that is quite long and needs shortening. So you can see on this branch I've got, um, this is this year's growth out here, last year's growth back here. So I'm going to prune it back. I don't want any buds back here, but I could try pruning it. The tree is very healthy. It's always kind of dangerous if you prune back to there's no visible buds. You could get that branch to die back. So maybe I'll just leave it long. I'll wait until I do get budding in here and then I can prune it back. I've got to be patient. And that's the way for all this long growth from last, from this year. Uh, it's just, there's no back buds visible at the moment. There is one bud back here, which is nice. And I think, I think I can use that bud. I think I can trim the end of this branch off. It's kind of sticking up. So I, I'll do that. I'm going to prune this part off back here. Again, leaving some room for dieback, like that. Now, it's awfully long, this branch. Again, there's no visible buds, but I could try and, you know, take a chance. It's very vigorous. I could prune it in half, see if buds develop in this area. If this branch were to die off, I still have the one out here that I could use to continue to grow this branch. So, I think I'm going to take a chance on this one. This is the most vigorous of all the branches in this area. So I'm going to prune it back to no visible buds. Here I go, like that. So I think that's about all I can do on this lowest branch now. Let's have a look at it. So I'm coming in. I know the lighting isn't the greatest here, but there's the branch when viewed from above. You can see, you know, it's got some nice structure to it. It's got some good movement, some good taper. It's coming along. And then if we go down lower, you can see, you know, it's flat. There's nothing really sticking up much. So it's looking quite nice. So now let's look at this back branch back here. It's really taking off in strength and vigor. I don't know if I can shorten it much. There's no back budding back here at all. Um, that might come eventually. Um, but, you know, this is in a fairly compact pot. It's not going to gain tremendous vigor in this pot. You know, if it was in a training box or something it might but but I'll do what I can on this branch shortening it I have if we come around the back here I've got it comes up I have a a branch here and one coming off here and the bottom one's more vigorous so I could either keep both or maybe just keep the one let me have a look from the front I'm looking at the this back branch from the front now it's not the greatest looking branch in the world. It's a bit, well, it's a bit 
long, not much movement, much, not much taper, and no back butting. Uh, well, I'm going to shorten it as much as I can and then have a look at it. So I've got these, this branch on the bottom here. I have a branch here. And is there two? Yes, there's two branches kind of coming out the back. So I'm going to prune the tip off. Here I go. Like that. So that takes a chunk of vigor out of that branch. And then the one coming up here, it comes up and then it divides into two here. The one is sticking out front, so I don't want that. I'm going to take the, that one off. So I'm dividing. There's one at the back, one at the front. And there's a lot of buds in this area. I'll probably cut up the middle one once it starts growing. That'll be for springtime. So that's got that back branch as compact as I can get it. I'm going to have another look at it from the front and see if I like it. So let me bend down here and... Yeah, I think it's okay. It kind of frames this part of the pot. It's got a similar movement, if you see it there. I think it's okay. So now, I'm moving off to the right-hand side. And, you know, this tree looks like it's windblown. It looks like it comes up the mountain, blows this direction. So everything on this side of the tree has got to be compact and maybe you know, growing back on itself, back into this direction. So I'm going to look at these branches on this now. Okay, so I'm looking at it. Uh, it comes out, I've got a division way back here, which is nice. I have pruned it off previously in spring out here. These develop quite nicely. Um, I want to keep it fairly compact. I don't want it growing out long on this side. So I am going to prune it back to these two new branches back here. Actually, there's a third one on the bottom, so that's good. And again, I'll leave some room for dieback. So here I go. Like that, that comes off. And then I can't do much with these branches yet. I need to get some back buds before I can prune them back. So I'll just leave them grow. You know, they'll get good light here. If a branch gets light and it's vigorous, generally you'll get some back buds on it. Okay, so we're going up the tree now. I'm getting into the apex area. So I'm going to look at that from the front. So the apex got a hard prune here. A new shoot on top regrew is the apex. Uh, so I'm trying to get a, a very zigzaggy apex. Now I've got a good branch off of here which follows that wind direction. So I'm thinking that would be my new apex here, and I would remove that top. I think that's a good plan. Um, the only other apex could be this one. I would have to remove that whole section, but I, I think that's, I'm losing this movement already. I, I get a nice zigzag if I keep this as my apex. So I'm going to prune off that top. It's, you know, it's getting really tall and vigorous. You can see on the top, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six buds, very vigorous. So if I prune this off, it's going to stimulate all kinds of back budding back in the tree because all that stored energy has to go somewhere. If it can't go up top, it'll go on all the branches. So here I go. Now this cut, um, this branch here is quite strong. There's not much chance of dieback. So I'm just going to prune it almost flush, just keeping, you know, a few needles in that area. So here I go. This is a quite a big step off with the apex, like that. So that really makes the tree more compact. And I really, I like that. So this branch coming out front, I've got 
you know, one that goes with the direction of the wind, the other one is fighting against it. Um, I have a bud in here, a new bud. So I think I'm going to take this one going into the wind right off. So here I go. I'll leave a few needles just in case it back buds. There. Like that. So still a little unusual. I've got a stub here where I prune this apex. I'm going to prune that off flush, get rid of that totally so it heals over quite nicely in that area. All right, here I go. I'm going to get rid of this stump here. If I do have dead wood on this tree, it'll come later. I'll develop all the branches and then I'll decide where it needs dead wood, what needs to be killed off, and that kind of approach. Okay, so that's flush now. All right, I'm going to move up the tree now. So I've already pruned this branch off. This one is too long. It's shading out the branch below it. Um, I don't think this branch is strong enough to prune it back a bit, but I could, but I'm going to leave it. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to see if I get some buds develop in this area, then I can prune it back. So going up the tree, I have two branches here. One is growing straight above the other, so I've got to pick my best one. And I think because I'm getting up in the apex here, uh, I want upright branches in the apex. As you go down the tree, they flatten out, and then as you go further down, they start to cascade. So in this case, I'm quite keeping the upper one and removing the lower branch, like that. Cleaning that out. And then I've got this apex here. I don't have any buds in here. Um, I do have... This branch kind of bugs me too. If you look from the front, this is sort of the inside of a curve. I've got another branch that's sweeping with the wind here. Pretty sure I don't need this branch. Yeah, I'm going to remove it. Here I go. Nice branch, just the wrong location. Okay. So there's the apex now. Um, this is the most vigorous part of the tree. I probably can prune that back and it'll sprout new buds in this area. It gets a little risky, but, you know, I think... The other option, you know, is to prune off the needles in this area, leave it exposed to the sun, leave this be my apex, it'll grow, and then it'll pop out back buds in here. I think, because it's at the apex, I've got needles back here also, I'm going to prune it back. Um, I do need some buds in this area, so if I prune it back, I think I'll get them. So I'm going to shorten it to here. Here I go, like that. And I'm quite sure I'll get all kinds of buds growing in this apex and it'll get really thick. So I'll have a lot of choices of branches in the future there. I, I don't know about this branch, you know, it's it all depends what happens. I doubt I'll keep it in the future, but for now, you know, it's a branch there. You know, maybe when this one's shortened, it'll look better. I'm going to step back and have a look at the tree and see if there's any more work I want to do. I'm standing back. I'm having a look at the tree. Um, it is a very unusual tree with that front crossing branch, but I think for the first time, I'm starting to see some design intent that, you know, you can almost picture the wind blowing up the side of the mountain and, you know, really shaping and contorting this tree. It doesn't follow any rules, this tree. It's, uh, I don't think it'll appeal to everyone. And, you know, I think it's going to be a wait and see tree. I'll see what develops this spring. I took a lot off the apex, so I'm expecting a lot of back budding. Should give me a lot of choices uh, for, 
you know, future design. But I, I think you're seeing a glimpse of what maybe the tree will look like far into the future. Here is a look at what I took off the tree. So, you know, a fair amount of foliage. Some good strong shoots. Yeah, so I expect back budding in spring for sure. I'll fly in now and you can see the tree kind of in 3D. Some different angles. There's not much growing out the back of this tree. You know, I'm hoping maybe I get something pop out here. That would be nice. And then I can, you know, develop something out here. But that, you know, see what happens. So there's the tree. That's uh, my unusual Scots pine in my unusual pot by Shani. And I think they, uh, yeah, I think they look good together. It's time now for today's updates. The first update for today is my apple tree. So the uh, dead wood on the trunk is definitely rotting out. You can see it's quite, <laughs> it's really decomposing. My live vein coming up here, if I wiggle it, you can see it's not the strongest in the world, but it's there. Uh, this middle part of the tree is definitely going to hollow out. This branch coming up the front, you know, it, it I, I like it. I, I think it follows the other part, live vein quite nicely back here, supports it. And then I've got the live vein off this side, which is getting fairly nicely developed also. I, it's not the worst in the world. I think after some pruning, and I had changed the front of the tree over to here, which looks pretty good. So I think this spring it's due for a repotting and a styling. So um, I can do the styling, you know, over the winter. And then when it's getting closer to spring, I'll repot it, change my front to the new position. I'll probably keep it in the same pot, but maybe not. I'm thinking that this pot may eventually be the pot for my Austrian pine here. Uh, it's a big pot for the Austrian pine at the moment, but this Austrian pine will grow. At the moment, it's in a mica pot. It's been in this pot for many years now. I think, you know, I'd like a slightly bigger pot than this. Uh, the, this one is bigger. It's not huge, huge big, but it's definitely going to look a little overpotted for a while, but I think this is a nice tokonami pot. I really like it. So I think that's the plan is to get the apple tree in a different pot. Um, it's kind of in training at the moment. Uh, so I'm going to try and find a nice pot, but I think this pot is destined for my Austrian pine. Unless I can find a nicer pot for my Austrian pine. I'm keeping my eyes open. Uh, I've got to find a nice pot for it. So I'll keep, keep looking. The next update is my Catoni Aster. The one I pruned off almost all the roots, almost all the branches. <laughs> and here it is. It's looking really good. It, it survived. You can see all the new shoots that are off of it. So I've got to do shoot selection get it ready for spring growth once again. So you can see there's a lot of branches coming from one spot here. That'll have to be fixed. And yeah, a bit of branch selection and pruning. My willow tree here, it did really well over the summer. You can see all the branching I got on it. This is a black willow. It's not a weeping willow. So it's more of a upright style to it. Yeah, and you know, there was a lot of dieback on the trunk, but it's healing. There's a bit of a dead stub there. The light veins are healing, strengthening up. So I think it'll be an interesting trunk in the future. 
there's some deadwood on here that I've got to get rid of. But, you know, the living vein's looking good. So, yeah, an interesting project, this uh, black willow. Looking forward to developing it. I did get a little die back here. You can see I pruned a branch here, hoping this branch and this branch live. This one died, so I guess I pruned a little close to it or didn't seal my cut to stop it drying out, so it dried back, died back to here. But I still have the branch that fans outward, which is probably good. Yeah, so the old willow. That'll be coming up too. I'll be doing some work on that. And I think this one is also due for a repotting. So I'll do that. Um, in the summer, I have it in this tray of water. But over the winter, I don't think I'll keep water in the tray. I'll keep it a little, uh, a little more on the dry side. So I drain the water. Um, that's what they did at the Montreal Botanical Gardens. They keep them in the wet pots over the summer, like the trays underneath so they can get lots of water. And then in the winter, they keep them a little drier. So I think that's a good routine for these willows to do that. My giant sequoias from seeds are looking really, really good. <laughs> they're nice and green and they're growing taller. So I'm really excited about getting this out of this broken up old seed tray and getting them planted as a forest this spring too. So I've got to prune these up and plant them as a forest. That'll be exciting. That'll be all kinds of cool work coming up this spring. I've got a lot of trees that uh, will be making that transition from seeds, seedlings and that to something a little better looking, uh, creating forests out of, you know, clumps of stuff. And I've got a lot of these small coniferous trees. There's a dwarf blue sawara false cypress. Uh, there's a cryptomeria here, japonica. There's a port oxford cedar here. There's a cryptomeria japonica. Another one, comp this is a compressa, and this one was a tensa, tensen. Um, interesting. So different varieties. Um, I'm going to plant the one, here's the pot I made and I planted a eucalyptus in it, but the eucalyptus didn't make it. I tried, but, uh, it didn't make it. So I'm going to put one of these, uh, little coniferous trees in that pot. These coniferous trees all came from that nursery by Matt's place. Uh, they were little pre bonsai starter trees. They're all I think they were $14, yeah, $14.99. So $15 for them. Really cool varieties that you don't see in many nurseries. And they're a nice size to begin as bonsai. They're kind of a great size to shape as uh, trees. So I'm thinking um, of maybe doing some kind of a penging with all these. They're a nice size for creating like a landscape. And they're all kind of, you know, similar care requirements. So. That may come in the future, that one. My Austrian pine here, I did a lot of branch pruning. Uh, it was getting, the branches were getting very fan shaped and there was no like leader to the branch. They were kind of coming out from the tree and then dividing in a fan. And there was no, they were all kind of equal at the tip. So I did a lot of pruning to try and kind of get a, a main leader on each of the branches coming off and so I took a lot of ramification off, a lot of thinning on the tree. So you can see the needles are really long because of that, that it uh, had fewer branch tips, fewer buds, the same amount of energy coming up from the root system. And that always makes longer needles. So as this uh, starts getting a little more dense, uh, as it back buds and gets more growing tips on it, the, the needle size will reduce once again. Um, yeah, so this tree, it definitely doesn't need a repotting, but it could use one. I think it's been probably at least a couple of years since it's been repotted. And I'd like to get it in a slightly bigger pot or a clay pot is what I'd like to get it in. It's in this mica pot and I'd like something that 
maybe just breathes a bit more, sucks a bit of moisture out of the soil more. Yeah, I think it'll be good for the tree. Up top on it, I have my two sacrifice leaders growing, this one and this one. So I'm trying to grow those and thicken up the trunk on it without thickening up the branch, branches. So that's the goal of these, is just to draw lots of energy coming to the top of the tree and just thicken the trunk up overall. So I hope it works. I, I've grown leaders before on this, let them grow and thicken up and yeah, it, it seems to work quite well. And then, boy, when you do prune these sacrifice leaders off, oh my goodness, all the energy goes back into the apex of the tree and it just back buds like crazy. It's, it's unbelievable. Up top, you don't get so much down below, but yeah, so and I think the top needs a lot of thinning too. You can see it's just really dense up here right now. So yeah, there'll be work coming on this Austrian pine in the future also. I guess every tree will have work on it coming up in the future. Yeah, should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. I've got my uh, bird's nest spruce in here. It's looking pretty cool. So I, that's also in a plastic pot. I want to uh, either make a clay pot or pick a nice clay pot to go with it. Um, the last time I pruned it, I wasn't very happy with the look of it. I pruned a lot of branches off. It looked pretty sparse. But now it's filled in again and it's starting to look good once again. <laughs> it's amazing, you know. I, several times I've really pruned this tree back, you know, taking off branches, trying to sort the structure out. And it always doesn't look very good, but then when it starts growing back in again, I'm you fall back in love with the tree again and it's... Uh, it looks nice. So there'll be more styling work coming on it, I'm sure. Uh, it'll get that new pot, which will be exciting. And I think it'll look a lot better in a new pot. That pot's way too big for it. I used to think winter was long and I couldn't wait for spring to come, but I have so many trees that I work on in the winter now that winter always seems to just go by so quickly. Like, I can't believe, you know, we're midway through December already. I can't believe it. So that just relieves January, February, March. So three more months to do all my trees, which it'll keep me really busy and I'll really enjoy it. I, uh, I really enjoy all the winter pruning on both the tropicals and the hardy trees. Because, you know, generally in the summer I let most of my trees grow. Uh, I take advantage of the good weather and they grow. And then the rest of the year I'm working on them, pruning them, repotting them, and yeah. So, yeah, winters seem really short now to me. I can't believe they just fly by. And as I said before, this year has just flown by. I can't believe it that it's getting towards the end of the year already. So on that note, that is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.